you have to stop being so scared that you're going to say the wrong thing or you, you're you not sure exactly what to say. So you say nothing at all, which is honestly the worst marketing strategy is to say nothing. Welcome to this week's episode of the Online Creator Podcast. My name is Kim, your podcast host, business mentor, and audio storyteller. This show is a space to inspire through conversations and community to help us keep connected, keep inspired, and keep moving towards our goals. Expect to hear honest conversations and real life experiences from entrepreneurs at every stage of business and from a wide range of industries. Find your confidence, see what is possible, and build the legacy that you have dreamed of. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Online Creator Podcast. This is episode 68, and today I'm joined with Candace Coppola. Candace is an author, podcast host, business coach, and entrepreneur who believes that you shouldn't have to do business alone. As a successful entrepreneur who grew a business from the spare bedroom of her home into a multi country, multi six figure company, it's safe to say she's navigated the bumpy road of entrepreneurship. She started her company, Jubilee Events, during the recession in 2008 with no experience and no contacts. She grew it into a recognizable brand and team. Over 12 years, she worked with clients from all over the world and produced events in excess of 1 million. Candace's work and voice can be seen in many publications, but most recently and most notably in her two books. She works with wedding industry professionals, helping them build profitable businesses through her courses, resources, coaching, and membership. Today, we dig into what omnipresent marketing means to her, how she uses it in her business, her favorite marketing platforms, the power of blogging, and developing a content strategy that works for you. We touch on the YouTube strategy as well and the importance of starting small. I'm so excited you're here today to take a listen to this incredible conversation with Candace. It was a pleasure having her on the show, and I hope you um, will gain some knowledge, some tips, some tricks to implement in your business today, this week, tomorrow. Help me in welcoming Candice to the show. Hi, Candice. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's been... um, Actually, I think I found you on Threads, which is so crazy. I kind of left that platform for a while, came back, and I think a lot of us have done the same. So Mm -hmm. it's been fun to connect with people over there. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. I'm a, a longtime Twitter user. I'm, I no longer use Twitter. So I am used to having platforms like that to meet people, to connect. I think they're such great tools. And I find I'm really enjoying threads. I'm enjoying the conversations over there, the people I'm meeting. I got to meet you. And so, yes. yeah, it's a great place to be hanging out. Yeah, absolutely. So just yeah. to start the conversation, I love to know what platform of choice, you know, we talked a little bit about threads. But what platform Mm. of choice do you show up for in your own business to uh, market and promote uh, what you do? I show up in almost all of them. And (laughs) it's definitely not easy. And it's been many years of finding my footing in each platform and learning how to use it and have it best serve me and my audience. So I'm on every platform you could possibly imagine. And I use them all pretty consistently and pretty strategically. It, it all started with Twitter, but I no longer really use that. <laughs> but I'm on Instagram. I have a podcast. I'm on YouTube. I have a blog. I'm on Pinterest. I oh do a lot God. of SEO. So I'm yeah. pretty much everywhere I need to be. TikTok, I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere. Okay. And did it, I know it's like a progression, like, it, you know, yeah. didn't start all in those, all those places. Can you tell us what's your favorite platform of choice? Do you like the writing? Do you like the audio? Do you like the video? Like if you were to show up every week on one specific platform, what would it be and why? I think my favorite platform to create content for is probably my podcast. It's such a great vehicle to vocalize your thoughts and your ideas. It's easy, relatively easy to create content for, to show up for unless you have to shoot video for it, which, you know, is sort of a necessary these days. But just the straight audio of podcasting, I love. It comes really natural to me, and I love doing it. But if I had to choose a platform that gives me the most bang for my buck in terms of ROI and bringing in qualified customers for my business, it would probably be blogging. Okay. 
that's good to know. And I'm actually hearing that more and more that blogging, like there's new kind of life being brought into blogging. It's not something that we should be like skipping out on or forgetting about. Definitely, if you're using SEO right, you can really drive traffic that way. And I mean, we spend a lot of time and energy on developing all this good content and having a website. Like, Mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to have that pay off in some way, shape or form instead of it just being kind of there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're totally right, Kim. I think blogging is one of the most undervalued and underappreciated marketing channels that we have at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. And it actually is one of the easiest ways to generate traffic to any of your offers or any of your products or your services. And I think one of the most effective because almost every person on the internet is using Google for a means of solving their problems. They're typing things into a Google search bar. They're looking for solutions. And while we spend so much time creating content for things like Instagram or YouTube or TikTok, and not just creating, but like begrudgingly creating, we we love Mm -hmm. to hate it. We don't necessarily love being an influencer on Instagram or having to create reels every day or follow the latest trends over on TikTok. Blogging gives you this amazing opportunity to create long form content that genuinely lives on for as long as it's uploaded to your website, letting new customers discover you and find you and get connected to some of your very best thoughts through the search search box. I'm a huge fan of evergreen um, content because it just keeps living on. And also the fact that you can breathe new life into some of those old articles, mm-hmm. right? The ones that are really engaged with the most, like you can mm-hmm. you can change them up a bit, right? And to not be afraid of that, I guess, as well. We always think that we need to keep being newly inspired. Oh, yeah. and, and that's what stops us with, from, from even starting, right? Is like, what can we, how can we possibly generate, you know, 50 more podcast episodes this year when we've already done 150, right? <laughs> it's true. But there's so, so many unique ways of doing that. Now, I know we talked about all the different platforms you're on. Is that what you would consider as omnipresent marketing or is there a different spin to that? Like, what's your take on that? Great question. This is sort of a buzzword right now, Mm omni-channel, omnipresent marketing. And I define the term as being in, in all the places where your business should be to spread your message so that it can reach the right people. To me, marketing is sharing your message so that it attracts and reaches the right people and brings them to you. And omnipresent or omnichannel marketing is taking that message and being in every place a potential lead or customer is hanging out, being in all of those places, sharing your message so that they can find you and connect with you. Right. And I think you hit on a great point there too is where your people are at because Mm -hmm. I think people that are listening are like okay well that's great I'm a team of one or I'm a small Mm -hmm. team how do we be all the places so I I think the most important piece like you said is finding where your people are at (laughs) because if they're not at TikTok like don't worry about all those short you know content video pieces that you need to create but be where your people are at And then is there like a process that you use that really helps like your clients or yourself work on so that you do it in a strategic way? I think I have a, over the years, I have developed a process for each individual platform and I also have help. So I'm not doing my marketing on my own. I have a podcast editor. I have Mm -hmm. a YouTube editor. I have somebody who does my copywriting and writes blog posts for me. And so I am not doing this all on my own, but I am definitely spearheading the content and the strategy. I use Asana to manage my entire business. So having some type of project management platform for marketing, I think, is important. It's kind of difficult to manage multiple different marketing channels and pieces of marketing without a hub or some kind of project management system in place. And then from there, I work with my team in that system. But I really, over the years, have learned what my audience needs to hear from me, what they struggle with at different stages of their own journey. And I just try to find ways to either create new content that speaks to those problems that they have and provides value or take past content and bring new life to it, meaning taking a past blog post and finding the 2024 spin to the content, republishing Or taking that blog post and making it into a YouTube video, giving somebody 
two options to consume. You can read or you can watch me present it on YouTube based on what your preference is and how you like to digest and take an info. Yeah, I love that. Have you been on YouTube for a while or is it something No, it's something new. I launched my channel at the end of 2022. And by launched, I mean like I put up a video. (laughs) Yeah, I hear you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And then in 2023, about I think it was around April or May, I started to get a little more serious about it. I hired a video editor and I started doing some more recording and doing it more consistently really every week. And it's been a slow burn. YouTube is an interesting yeah. platform to use. Mm-hmm. And I think you have to go into it unless you want to be a YouTube content creator, which is a whole different conversation. I'm a business coach. I'm a course creator. I'm an online marketer. I am not a YouTuber, but I use YouTube in order to help my ideal clients and show them the solutions that I provide. And so it's been a bit of a slow burn, but it's actually gaining traction. And more and more, I'm meeting people in my inbox and in my programs who are like, I'm obsessed with you. I've, I've watched every YouTube video you've created. I listened to all your podcast episodes. I've read all your blog posts. And that is so gratifying when somebody, when it's yeah. starting to work, Right. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, because we do put a lot of time and energy. And even if you have a bit of a small team that is helping you with all the editing, because don't even get me started, like podcasts are one thing, the video mm-hmm. is a whole nother beast and it being is. able to be consistent on there. And, mm. and but I think also I think a really important point is figuring out your why on that platform, because, mm-hmm. you know, you can use podcasting, for example, in so many different ways like for your business, you can do that with YouTube as well. Right. right? And so I think it's important to really make sure that you understand, are you doing this to be the next big content creator? Or are you doing this as a support mechanism to enhance your programs in your business? And I think that's like what you said. And and it's another great search tool too. Like if Mm -hmm. people are searching for they're going to use YouTube as well if they're YouTube people, right? I mean, my husband lives and breathes on YouTube. Like he's learned so much on, you know, there's so many different topics. It's just not a platform that I go to to learn. I tend to lean more onto podcasts because I can listen Mm -hmm. on the go. But my husband does a different job so he can spend hours watching and I just can't do that. But I think there's a specific audience and a specific reason for all of these platforms. Oh, 100%. And so for me, when I decided to bring in YouTube, the strategy behind it was, well, we're ranking really great in our SEO targeted keywords. Mm -hmm. So how can we not just be an article, but also visually rank? Because obviously YouTube is owned by Google. So I'm thinking to myself, how can I double down on this and even enhance the SEO of my blog post by attaching the YouTube video equivalent into the blog post, how can we double down on this strategy uh, in 2024 and beyond and really try to bring in as many leads as we can, help as many people as we can. So that's really where the YouTube strategy Mm -hmm. started, but it evolved into also becoming this content bank of cornerstone content that I am creating that I feel like is relevant no matter the time or the place that I hope is relevant 10 years from now, the advice I'm giving. Yes. And I'm really targeting wedding planners, aspiring wedding planners, new wedding planners on YouTube. That is my demographic. That is who I'm creating content for specifically. Yeah. So I'm creating this content and these great videos, how to get your first client, how what you should put on your website, fundamental business stuff that everybody has questions about. Yeah. And I plan to link to it and to reference it and to use it in my email marketing, nurture sequences for years to come and have it continue to work for me in the years to come, helping out my customer, but also helping them attach themselves to me, find out about me and see all the tools and resources I have that can help them with their business. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And there's a few things that you just said in there that I'm like, I need to make sure that I'm doing that. (laughs) So take us on before we get into like what you do with your clients and who Mm -hmm. you specifically serve. And you just mentioned that briefly. When you are looking at developing content for your week or your month, or I'm not sure how many weeks ahead you are, Mm -hmm. do you start then with the video of the the YouTube content and then break it down from there? Or do you start with your podcast episode? Mm -hmm. Do you start with your blog? Like, where do you start? 
I start with it all. I, and I try to think, what have we created that we can then bring over here? What blog post okay. have we written recently that should be a podcast episode or can then become a YouTube video? I take a, a look at everything in its sort of holistic sense per quarter. Okay, and gotcha. then we start to move different puzzle pieces around and decide what are we going to record? What guests are we going to invite on the show? What blog posts are timely for what people are searching for or will be searching for in the coming months? You know, I don't have an answer for every channel. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know what to post on YouTube right now. And so I go back through old blog posts and see what can, what have we already done? What work have we already done that now we can just take and put a little more work behind, change the format and post over here? So it, it's a few different things at play when I'm coming together for a content creation strategy. I always plan per quarter. I have to think about what are my launches? What products do I want to sell? in this quarter? What's going on in my ideal client's life right now? What are they searching for? What do they need? Uh -huh. What is top of mind for them? What's also pop culture relevant right now? What, what are some of all of these things? And then it's just kind of like a puzzle, putting it all together and yeah. seeing what works and what sticks and what we have time for. Mm -hmm. I use Asana, like I mentioned, and I also have a spreadsheet that, that maps out my content, the cadence, the flow of it. As a podcaster, Kim, you know that sometimes you you don't want to just get granular in each episode, but you want to zoom out and be like, okay, yeah. what what are we missing? What what have we not discussed? Or <laughs> what is redundant? What do we need to maybe schedule later on or something? So a spreadsheet helps me to also look at the content from, let's say, the entire season or the entire quarter and make sure the cadence is right, the scheduling is right, all of that. Yeah. And to make it as organic as possible to not be planned out so far in the future mm -hmm. too, that you're missing out on opportunities that maybe something just popped up in the wedding industry right. that you really want to talk about, right? right? So making sure there's flexibility in, in there. And I think that's really important as a creative, as an oh, yeah. online business owner, entrepreneur, like we constantly have to be pivoting and changing. So I think it is important to kind of zoom out, like you said, and see what's mm -hmm. going on. And then you can get really specific when you need to. So I love yeah. that advice. Yeah. I think it's important to be flexible. Just the other day, I came across a photo of Meryl Streep and Beyonce at the Grammys. And I'm like, this is instantly a meme. And so we made it into a meme. You know, I, I downloaded it. The next morning, I was asking my social media manager, what do you think? What are some, mm -hmm. you know, captions you would throw over this meme as a wedding planner? We talked about a few. I went in Canva, I just created it, I posted it, boom. It wasn't something that was planned months in advance. It doesn't fit anywhere in our goals, but it's fun. It's timely. timely. It's got a bit of pop culture to it. And it you, it gets the best engagement because it yeah. is, it's a moment in time that once it goes, it's gone. And so you have to be open to, to capturing some of that stuff if including pop culture in your marketing is part of your overall strategy. Yeah, I love that. And I think I yeah. saw that on a few people's the next day. And I mean, <laughs> the Grammys were so fun to watch. I was so touched and moved by it this year. I don't know why. Oh Maybe my gosh. I'm a little more emotional. The jo I know, but the Joni Mitchell, like, I don't, oh. I can't tell you how many TikToks I watched of Joni Mitchell singing. And like, we're all thinking about the love actually scene. Like there's, uh, yeah, it's just, it, it was a great, it was a great year for the Grammys for sure. So good. And on a yeah. like crazy side note, Joan. Joni Mitchell was like, actually, she's Canadian, but I didn't actually realize she lived very close to where oh, I'm wow. from. So I didn't know That's that. Cool. And I'm a huge fan. Like, I mean, she's just You're like, practically related now. <laughs> that is so funny. It was so good. It was so good. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to read this because I want to make sure that I get it right. But you are a business coach for entrepreneurs, but specifically in the wedding industry, like you said. That's right. To help them build profitable and recognized businesses. Mm -hmm. What are some missed opportunities or common things that you're seeing in the industry that are preventing them from kind of elevating, you know, their business or their marketing strategy? So many things. I, I feel like I don't know where to begin. Marketing is hard. It's yes. really, really hard. And most of us get into business because we have a knack for what we do in our business. And as creatives, we want to do the creative work in our business. We don't expect to be marketers. And I think most wedding pros come to a crossroads where they have to 
decide if they want their business to grow and if they want to attract a higher end clientele that they need to double down on their marketing and they need to make time for it and they need to put themselves out there and they need to do things that make them uncomfortable and they need to become marketers. They're not just planners or photographers or caterers or whatever their skill set is, that they are also, and more importantly, marketers and they need to sell because without sales and without clients, you don't have anything, right? Mm -hmm. There's so much that stands in our way, though, when it comes to marketing. I think people have a fear of being judged mm -hmm. by others, and that limits what they say and what they put out, how they show up in their own marketing, how they show their face, how they share their voice. I often ask the women I mentor and coach, if somebody were to scroll on Instagram and if they were to hear a voice and it was your voice, would they know it was you? Would they know it was you speaking? If they were to scroll on Instagram and they were to see an image from one of your weddings, would they know it's your image? And so most people respond with, no, they probably wouldn't. And if that's the case, that's a, just a really good indication that you're not putting enough of yourself into your brand and into your marketing. I think we overthink or we tend to overthink absolutely oh everything in business everything. because most of us are overachievers. Like, mm -hmm. let's be real. If we're in this business, we're doing it because we want to succeed on some level or we're doing mm -hmm. it as a hobby and that's fine too. But if we're doing it for to run a business and to generate revenue and to be successful, we so overthink all the things. Yeah. I had a copywriter friend uh, tell me once that because I, I know copy for me is something that I keep getting hung up on, right? Because there's so many voices out there and so much noise about how you need to be talking and this and that and mm -hmm. all the things. And she just simply said that you should record your voice, record mm -hmm. what you want to talk about, pull the transcripts and start looking at like actually how you speak. That's how you should be writing your copy. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you're going to sound like you just said, completely not like you. And if you are truly bringing people into your world that want to be working with you, it's because you are showing up as you, not as somebody different. Right. So I thought that was a good piece of advice. Yeah, we definitely let analysis paralysis, our fear of judgment, mm -hmm. we overcomplicate everything. You know, marketing is a, an experiment. Yeah. So you have to be willing to try things. Don't take it so seriously. I find that a lot of the women I coach are so afraid to say the wrong thing. Yes. Somewhere along the line, some business coach, some podcaster, some ex some expert made everybody scared that if you say the wrong thing, you're going to attract the wrong person and then you're totally screwed. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, not there's it's not one Instagram post that's going to tank your business. I mean, unless you right. say something that gets you canceled because you're crazy or you say something absolutely right. absurd, right? But outside of that, you know, it's it, one post on Instagram or one blog post isn't going to suddenly open the gates to all these terrible clients who are going to bum rush and start hiring you. You have to be, you have to stop being so scared that you're going to say the wrong thing or you, you're you not sure exactly what to say. So you say nothing at all, which is honestly the worst marketing strategy is to say nothing. <laughs> you let, you let the silence do the talking for you. People wonder, are you still in business? Are you active? Are you proactive? I mean, they start having all these assumptions about you. But mm -hmm. either way, so many of us are scared to say the wrong thing that we end up saying nothing, nothing. at all. Yeah, and that's so true. And the other thing that I want people to really hear is that just just start, like be messy. That's okay. Like your YouTube channel was a work in progress. It still is. Mm -hmm. So is mine. Like so is my yeah. podcast. If I wouldn't have quietly hit record and just quietly launched it, I never would have done it, you know, because we are perfectionists in our own way. And I think we just need to get over that and just yeah. start uh, by simply showing up in a place that we're comfortable to start and just start putting in the repetitions, right? Putting in the practice, yes. just like you do as an artist, just like right. you do as a creative. We're never, we're not all born to be perfect at everything or, or really great or good at everything. But if we put in the time and we put in the reps, it will be easier and we will show up more consistently for the people in our world to gravitate towards us. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important. Imagine this, a customized website design that is as unique as you are and done in one week. Think of us as your in-house website designer. 
we offer a semi-custom show it website design that is ideal for the established coach, creative online business owner who is ready to create a presence online and is ready to take action quickly. We build out a layout that nurtures your visitors, SEO best practices to help you get ranked in Google, development of five plus pages to drive traffic, and training and launch support so that you can update your website after our time is done. You have the choice. You can keep spinning your wheels and flying by the seat of your pants, or you can have a strategically designed website that allows you to connect and convert because that is what your business deserves. If you're interested in learning more, check out the link in the show notes to see if website in a week is the right fit for you. Is there anything that I missed that you work on with your clients that you're just like, oh, I really want to touch on this today before we wrap up? Well, I I think for me, one of the biggest successes I've had in marketing in general is this omnipresent marketing strategy, seeing my marketing as an entire ecosystem. What you might see on the surface is an Instagram post here or something I share over here, maybe an article or a YouTube video. But below the surface, everything is connected and it's talking to each other. And so I write the blog post because my goal is to increase my affiliate revenue for the blog post that it's written about. And so the goal is to get people to go over here. And if they don't do that, I'm going to get them on my email list and I will nurture them into making decisions over here. And if they are on my email list, they're probably going to learn about my YouTube channel, my podcast, my Instagram. And so everything works in harmony together, but it wasn't always that way. So you can see someone like me who's been in business for a really long time. And you see all the things I'm talking about, and I've got all this marketing background. This took years to build and to get to where you see it today. Yeah. If you are just getting started on a podcast or you are just looking to go from Instagram and expand your marketing into SEO or blogging or something else, Mm -hmm. know that it takes time to build that ecosystem and that infrastructure that I've built over the years. Yeah, And so don't see what I'm doing and think, oh, I can do that overnight or be overwhelmed by all the moving parts that I have and not do anything at all. (laughs) You've got to start small and start in one place. By adding an an additional marketing channel to your business, you can increase the, the footprint of your message and potentially reach an audience that doesn't exist on the platform that you're currently on or connect Mm -hmm. deeper with the same audience in another type of content piece or longer form content. Yes. I love that. And you have to start somewhere and you Mm -hmm. have to be a little open-minded about what other opportunities could be possible. Right. And, and if we don't try, how do you know, it's just like starting a podcast. You, You can take a look at the episodes that we're engaged with the most and then dive deeper into those. Like there's so many unique ways of being able to really tap into what your audience is looking for by looking at what you already have developed. And I it's think the true. other, yeah, the other important piece is to take a, a bigger picture lens too of what you already have developed. Mm-hmm. Because I think a lot of us actually have more than we give ourselves credit for. And if oh, you yeah. actually take a look at what you already have developed, you could probably develop like your next 30 days of content with just what you already have and your knowledge base that you already are, right? So Completely, yeah. One of my favorite tricks is we bank all of the questions that we get asked by our students, whether it's in office hours and coaching calls. We bank all of the chats from Zoom, from all of our discussions. We have type forms set up where people can submit questions. In my mastermind, I have so many different type forms where people submit their goals and the things they're working on. All this to say that all that information serves the unique purpose of whatever we created it for. Office hours questions are for questions for me to answer during office hours. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it a little bit differently and you start to see it as data that you're collecting, that you and your team, or just you if you're the team too, over time you can go in and say, well, what are some of the most common questions I'm asked? And Can I create a podcast series about these? Can I create a YouTube video series? Can I go and see what the search results are for some of these questions? Should I be showing up in these search results? Is there anybody searching for this? 
And so you take all of this information you've banked, you start to do a little data mining. You also mm-hmm. learn your voice of customer too. So you see how they're yeah. asking the questions, what they're saying, which can help you in your copy and everything. And that is like, if when you are not sure what to talk about, you just go to that spreadsheet where all the stuff yeah. lives. <laughs> you just say, hey, so what's a recent question I've been asked? And if you don't have access to this, you can easily go into your inbox and look at some of the common questions that come through your inquiry forms. What are yeah. the problems people are telling you they have? How are they describing those problems? Your clients, what are the questions they ask during the process that maybe you could better answer in a content piece? I mean, you have tons of data in your inbox that you don't even realize that can help you create better marketing content. That is such great advice because I was going to say, even if you don't have like a big membership or a big group Mm -hmm. offer and you work one-on-one with clients, the best market research is your current clients that you have or your Mm -hmm. past clients. And it's okay to like throw them out even like, you know, a form or a request like after you've even done working with them to see how it was and did you serve them the right way or Mm -hmm. if they still have questions or issues or it's like the best market research. And I think it's something that totally. is a gem that we should not skip over as well. So that, I agree. that and yeah. blogging, we got to like re- breathe new life into this market research and blogging because yep. I think those mm-hmm. are things that people just kind of forget about. And they're so important. Mm-hmm. So, so important. important. I think my blogging strategy is probably single-handedly helped me grow my business to where it is now, which is a half a million dollar a year business. Blogging has really done that, but it's been blogging and email marketing together. Right. Like I said, I have this ecosystem that you don't see. Mm-hmm. It's all below the surface, but my goal on my blog, unless I have a blog post that's specifically for an affiliate revenue goal or something, right. is to get someone on my email list, to get them to opt in, to get them to Give me their email so that I can begin having a conversation with them and for them to also choose where their adventure is going to go from here. Right. And so having a great email marketing system set up, a workflow set up can also be helpful. And if you want, you can in your email nurture sequence, maybe in the first email you send, ask them to fill out a brief survey And to share with you a little bit about them, ask ask them some pretty easy questions that they can click around on and choose A through D or something. Nothing long form, no paragraphs they need to, no paragraph boxes. Keep it simple. Keep it like nine questions. Have them fill out this survey. It's a data mining survey for you. And then you can look at those results every week, every month, however often you need to, to kind of understand and get a pulse for, well, where is my current audience right now? And where do, they, where do they need help? What are they struggling with? I have a survey like this and I give away an Amazon gift card every month to the people who filled it out. And I get such great feedback and it helps me just understand who I'm talking to because I'm right. talking to multiple types of folks in, my, in the wedding industry. And mm-hmm. then also at different stages, not everybody is a brand new planner or a new photographer. Right. So being able to understand that helps me then bring them over to the right email nurture sequence that nurtures them based on who they are, how long they've been in business, and what they're looking for. Okay. I've got to dust that off because (laughs) I have totally (laughs) skipped on that as well. And I think that's such great advice. If people want to find out more about Mm -hmm. who Candace is and what you do, um, how do they find you? My website is probably the best place to check out all the things that we've discussed. Put yourself in my email marketing sequence. Go check out my YouTube. Go just find your way around. But CandiceCoppola.com links out to my podcast, my Instagram, and and all the places where we can connect. Perfect. And before I let you go, I love kind of ending with just like a reflective question. And today's is just how, what does success mean to you? And is there anything in your life that has, you know, been instrumental in getting you there? For me, I think success in business is just an overall quality of life and happiness. Mm-hmm. Feeling fulfilled every day, that I work, uh, getting results for my clients, obviously financially being able to support a lifestyle that I want. Success, I think, is just being happy with the work that I do and feeling like every day I made a difference for the people that I help. Yeah. I love that. What was the second? Is is there anything instrumental that has helped you along the way to achieve that? 
Oh, yeah. I, maybe turning 40 changed my perspective on a lot of things. Age does that. Age <laughs> yeah. does that. It's tricky. It's tricky. Oh, my yeah. gosh. It's so yeah. true. But, you know, I had uh, an entrepreneur on a couple of weeks ago, and she was talking about some tips of, you know, how to be reach success as an entrepreneur. And she mm. said, you know, well, self-care, number one, mm. like look at, looking after yourself. And the other one, the other thing that I thought was interesting was she just said to have fun. And I was like, well, isn't that kind of a no-brainer? And she's like, yeah, but we don't do it enough. And if we're not having fun in our business, we're not going to show up, right? So I just kind of loved that. And it's something that I've been thinking about quite often because if I wasn't having fun in this, I would just go back to my nine to five and I really don't want to do that. No, none of us do. And fun is underrated. For some Mm -hmm. reason, we tend to overcomplicate things and believe that things have to be hard. Yeah. Our goals have to be hard, that the the projects we're doing, everything is difficult. It's got to be, it's hard. Yes. I choose fun. When you yeah. turn 40, you're like, you know what? I want to have fun. I I, I don't want to do anything that doesn't bring radical funness to my day. Yeah. Fun and yeah. joy. This is what we enjoy. need to be bringing more into our life because life yeah. is too dang short and it's too stressful it's if we don't. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much for spending the time with me. I love the conversation. I love the the gentle reminders and you know, just some really great tips because I think it's important to be thinking about marketing and promoting our business in different ways on the regular because, again, we're doing this as a business, not a hobby. So I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Kim. Thanks again for tuning into this week's episode of the Online Creator Podcast. If you haven't subscribed to the show yet, please do so on your favorite media player and come check us out over on YouTube where you have full access to our episodes on video there. You can check out the important links mentioned in today's episode in the show notes and please join the conversation over on Instagram at May and James Co. I'll see you next week.